Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound. This is where a global event from Silicon Valley, New York, all around the world, uh, investors, entrepreneurs all coming together to build this industry. A lot of great conversations, a lot of conversations around Puerto Rico as a place to domicile for these great investments and companies. Obviously post hurricane, a lot of action here, a lot of interest. Blockchain for good, crypto for good, also for money making. Our next guest is Scott, Scott Mice, who's the Network Society Labs. Welcome to theCUBE. Good to see you again. You, so you have a knack for being in real inflection point markets. Um, we first met almost 15 years ago in Silicon Valley. Nanotech was a field um, that was a great track. It's doing great work, has great impact. You're now in, we see each other around. Hey, you're <laughs> birds of a feather flock together. Right. You're going, you're doing crypto, doing some work. Take a minute to talk about what you're doing, yeah. Scott. What's the work? Network Society Lab, what's yeah. that about? Right. I guess, I guess we're both living on the bleeding edge. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, I'm the CEO of Network Society Lab, and we're a venture development firm. So we provide the same services as an incubator or accelerator, but primarily for the portfolio companies of Network Society Ventures, which is another company that's in the Network Society Kuretsu. Uh, which is headed by David Orban, who's speaking here today. Is that an investment group, or is that more of an advisory yeah. service? Um, the fund is a, a, a seed stage venture they capital They deploy capital. Fund, yeah, that focuses on exponential technologies and decentralized networks, companies that are, the companies that are driven by that. Um, and you know, we work with those companies to help them be successful. Great, so two different groups. Two different the lab organizations. Lab down and dirty, help advisory, yes. help accelerate the right. mission. Right, and in that same Kuretsu, there's also Network Society Research, which is a think tank, and Network Society of Media, which is a media company. All right, so what are the things you're working on? Give us, give us a taste of the kind of ventures and projects you're working on right now. Uh, most of the work we're doing right now is what we call token sale management, and that's basically taking responsibility for executing uh, a token sale from you know, beginning to end, all of the activities, and um, and, and bringing together service providers that are world class in each one of the uh, responsibilities that you need to uh, uh, be executed uh, in order to have a successful token event. Uh, and, and then we manage them the same way a general contractor in a construction environment manages subcontractors. Is that because there's too many moving parts, there's a lot of lawyerly going on, uh -huh. you get tax advice, is that the uh, reason or? Why we, why we structure yeah, it that way? Yeah. Well, we want to keep a lean internal staff, so we don't want to have a you know, huge head count. And also, this allows us to work with world-class people. Like for instance, uh, on two of the projects we're doing now, Michael Turpin's the PR guy. So that automatically means that you know, among the team, there's over 50 ICOs under the belt. And it's the same for every service provider. They've done you know, some significant number of these and the combined experience, the combined capability is really the best team you can get together in the world. So talk about the um, global impact of this because you know, we were talking last night, we were saying, hey, you know, killer app is money. Uh -huh. And that's what blockchain, cryptocurrency, right. essentially decentralized apps are all going to have flowing through them. Right. Value yes. creation, value capture with money as the killer app. Mm -hmm. What kind of projects are you working on that go outside the US and is it global um, phenomenon I'll, and what's your take on that? I'll, I'll give you a specific example, uh, one example which is called Wealth Migrate and they uh, have a coin called the Wealth E coin, Wealth with the capital E on the end. And um, what they are is a fractional real estate ownership company. So if you're someone who's in the uh, emerging uh, developing world and you want to uh, begin to build wealth and you'd like to own a piece of first world real estate in, in the US or Australia or UK, you can go to this website, and today the minimum's about $1,000, uh, but by, fur by implementing the blockchain further, they want to eventually get down to $1, you can buy a piece of real estate and enjoy the returns on that. So this is uh, closing the wealth gap. Wealth gap. It's giving uh, people who are just getting into the middle class the yeah. ability to own real estate and build wealth. In what's going on in Puerto Rico here? If you had to, if folks couldn't make it here, what's the dynamic here? Obviously the hurricane um, pretty much crushed the island. Yes. Well documented. Yep. Um, but the entrepreneurial culture here is coming 
together with outside ecosystem communities. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing here in Puerto Rico? What's the What's your observation? Well, it's actually a pretty fascinating experiment. I mean, uh, Michael Turpin of Transform Group has been in living, living in Puerto Rico for quite some time, and he was kind of the Pied Piper, um, you know, evangelizing this place and saying, hey, this is a great place to come live. It's got a favorable tax structure, et cetera. And um, I, I think it's fantastic that the crypto community is essentially adopting Puerto Rico and also moving here. So there, you know, all this activity is really going to give a, a shot in the arm to the Puerto Rican economy. And, and people are doing that you know, very intentionally as a way to give back um, and, and help to uh, rebuild the island. So what do you say to the folks out there that say, well, it's not just Puerto Rico, there's other domiciled digital nations out there. I mean, today the UK announced, or yesterday mm -hmm. announced, that they're going to convert to fiat Mm -hmm. currency with a faster payment system with Coinbase. Oh, it's a significant right. radical move. So can Puerto Rico can maintain a position and companies like countries like Bahrain, which Amazon works with, you got Armenia, mm -hmm. all the, you got China, you got all these, you know, Estonia. Uh -huh. I mean, you have people who are jockeying for uh -huh. similar positions. I well, mean, is it going to be a new digital nation sovereignty structure or? Um, I, well, What's I think Puerto Rico has a particular advantage in this part of the United States. So if you're a U.S. citizen, then this is the only place where you can go and stay in the U.S. and get this special treatment. Um, so I think it's always going to have a little bit of a niche there. But I mean, this is truly a competitive environment. It's global, it's very competitive. There are certain nations that are very, very anti-crypto, like the United States, for instance. Um, and there are certain nations that embrace it. I mean, the one that we like best and where we're doing a couple of uh, token sale events or ICOs is, is Malta. And uh, Malta has a history of um, creating a regulatory environment that's very favorable to things like financial services and iGaming. So doing digital currency uh, is something that's a natural for them and the government and the regulatory agencies are all in. So they're a competitor. And there are many others, as you said, but I think that's all good because you know, competition will you know, bring down prices, uh, spur innovation, et cetera, et cetera, and that's The regulatory um, posture and policy will be the gating factor for competitiveness for nations. Um, yeah, quite, you know, that, that's one of the major factors. It wouldn't be the only one, but absolutely. I mean, when you've got a situation where the regulators are saying, our mission in life is to have a light touch. You know, we want it to be regulated. We don't want, you know, a lot of fraud going on, but, you know, we want to make it easy for you guys to be doing these things. Yeah. Uh, it makes a huge difference. So what do you say to the folks out there that would say, okay, you know, Michael Turpin, He's got so many ICOs, he's just pumping and dumping these things. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got so many ICOs and he's, pr he's a promoter, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not really, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he started out as a PR firm. Yeah, he's a PR yes. firm. <laughs> you got a PR firm uh -huh. uh, as a leader in the industry. Um, some people will say, hey, that's, I want to see Goldman Sachs come in. Uh -huh. I want to see real players come in. I want to see more validation. Mm -hmm. Right. The PR messaging is not going well. Look at Brock Pierce. Right. He got taken down by um, John, you know, John Oliver. Oliver. <laughs> New York Times wrapping Bad timing. up. You know, just, so you have a lot of kind of like FUD out there. Yeah, yes. So what do you say to that? Uh, what do people say to that? I, I do think that's my own opinion, but yeah, yeah. I'll share after you share I, yours. But. I mean, just one observation is you, you, can, you can tell a lot about a person's personality type by what their initial reaction is to cryptocurrency. It's almost like a Myers Briggs, <laughs> right? <laughs> and. Uh, the, uh, Explain that. Uh, um, well, just you know, in my experience, I've, I've introduced the idea of crypto, or now that I'm in the field, a lot of people have approached me, friends, uh, and, and who want to learn. Who, who want to learn, but you know, it, it, it's they they come into it with certain biases, right? And for some reason, crypto really pokes at people's biases. And you know, some people can't get over the fact that, well, you know, why does it have any value? Right, and they go, well, you know, and I go, well, why does the United States dollar have any value? I mean, you've got full faith and credit of the government that's in debt by $20 trillion. You know, is that a good idea? And, you know, but they, 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 they don't understand the... What uh, are some of the reactions or, you get huh? across the board? What's the spectrum of reactions? I mean, you got the one end, which is fraud, it's bad. Yeah, it's, gotta be, it's gotta be a scam. The next revolution yeah. is here. It's the entire spectrum. Uh, you know, and uh, again, like I said, it has a lot to do with what people's personalities. If people are very conservative and skeptical, yeah. they're going to they're going to be conservative and skeptical about it, and, and look for the negative. 
if they're you know, very innovative and cutting edge and open to new ideas, yeah. they're going to think it's, it's cool and interesting yeah. and is an agent for change. Well, a lot of people I talk to, and, my, and, my, and here's my opinion, I personally believe that you can't PR your way to industry momentum. Right. That's the old way. So yes. I'm down on the whole right. press release model right. of just pump and dump, and you're seeing a lot of that. Um, and it's not just the transform group, it's just PR in general. Uh -huh. There's also people you know, uh, misrepresentation. So, so to me, that's a communication vehicle, not primary. Right. The key is value creation. Yes. Which companies are creating value? Which ones communities are endorsing? Right. Who has real communities? Yes. Who doesn't? So I think as investors come in, the thing that I'm hearing is smart money saying, I want quality deals. Yes. And I got to peel away the promotional layer. Yes. And look at the core data. Right. That well, seems to be a flight to quality right now in this market. There, there's a major flight to quality. I mean, we're, we're probably in the third or fourth you know, era of, of ICOs. And there is a flight to quality because real, people realize what I call these deals are vaporware or field of dreams. Right, these are the ones where yeah. there's really nothing there and it's, you know, give me 30 million and I'll build this the most, I'll boil the, boil the ocean for you. Yeah. Um, that's why we like to work with companies like Wealth Migrate because what they've done is on relatively small capital, proven a business model and, 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 and started a business yeah. and now what they need is money to scale that, yeah. that model. And those are the ones that we prefer, and and that's when people can look and say, uh, you know, I can see that this bot, that this business model is working, and that's where you know, a lot of the risk is factored yeah. out, and now it's just about making that a bigger business. You know, the thing I tell people is when you look at selecting service providers or partners, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, PR, um, strategy, advisory, it's not so much the function. I mean, I was just, you know, I'm against the PR angle, mm -hmm. but let's take Transform Group. They have a rich social network. Right. So the signaling is if they are involved, right. or you're, so it's about the network you're choosing, it, right? Yes. So to me, it's not so much the functional PR or right. the functional advisory. Well, it's really and that's, who's bringing the network effect. Yeah, that's true. Investors to the table, partners to the table. Right. Well, and that's good and bad, actually, because you're talking about hype. There's no uh, more uh, fertile hype environment than social media. I mean, one of the things I find to be really scary is that a proxy for the quality of the ICO is how many Telegram followers does the chat group have, <laughs> which I think is just insane. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. You can game that. Yeah, well, absolutely. Scott, what are you working on now? What's next for you? What's some of the things that you see happening in the next year? Uh, well, we're just staying heads down, you know, uh, executing several of these token sale events or ICOs, and uh, that's what we're going to do. We're also uh, going to get back to uh, the original knitting, which was our mission, which is expand our venture development services, so have some, a full, you know, palette of things that, that the startups from Network Society Ventures can choose from uh, so that we can help them make successful. Token Be economics successful. is the critical decision every company has to make. Yes. And having advisory help is great. Yes. Thanks for uh, sharing your opinion here on theCUBE. Mm -hmm. I'm John Furrier here in Puerto Rico for theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Blockchain Unbound. Back with more coverage after this short break. Thanks for watching.